One thing we can all agree about, the worst gift you can get is a gift card to a place that you would never shop at. But now with Bitmo, a social gifting app for iOS and Android, you can exchange those unwanted gift cards for a gift card to a place you actually shop at. What's best about this is you can exchange these gift cards to any retailer in the Bitmo app, and you can see how simple and easy this is to do. You can also send gift cards to anyone in the USA with a mobile number or email. Redeeming a gift card is also really easy. With just a couple of taps, you're up and ready to go. And best of all, these gift cards never expire, so you can use it when you want to. So if you're looking for the perfect gift, either for yourself or a friend, try Bitmo today. And right now, using the code TOT10, you can get 10% off an Amazon gift card from $25 to $100. So check out Bitmo, you're sure to like it. All right, so Bitmo seems pretty cool, right? Why get a gift that you just don't want? And if you guys wanna be able to get an Amazon gift card for 10% off, use the code TOT10 and you'll get 10% off. Now, with that said, um, you guys who follow the channel know that when we got our Ryzen 7 2700X, we were having one heck of a time getting it going, even with the different boards that we had. And I didn't want to get, you know, a whole bunch of boards, but we still tried a couple. So before I even start the video, I'm going to do something I've never really done before. This particular motherboard, this thing, we went through three of these boards, exact same parts, all together in this system, this board would never ever get past Windows. So honestly, I would avoid buying this motherboard. That's just my opinion. I've also contacted Matt, the dude from Gigabyte, and I've asked to exchange these to get a different board that would work. I've been completely ignored. So honestly, I tried, but this board never worked for us. I was on the phone with AMD. I was on the phone with every single solitary person I know trying to see what was going on. We even had, you know, Paul from Paul's Hardware and Kyle from Bitwit. They came over, they looked at it like, okay, whoa, okay, this just doesn't make any sense. So this board never worked. And then let me take to go out of camera range, go on one second. And this particular board also never worked. Neither one of these boards. I went through two of these and three of the other one, and these boards would never ever go into the Windows environment no matter what we did. And believe me, we've changed out every part, power supplies, everything, the memory, the, 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 the hard drives, just every single solitary part taken out of a case, putting it back into a case, no luck whatsoever. So those two motherboards, they never worked. So I contacted my friend from ASUS and this board right here, this board kicks ass. It worked right out of the box. I didn't have to do any changes to the memory whatsoever. It ran just fine. I, we did change the memory to, to XMP, so it ran at 3000 megahertz, which is what's on the memory sticks. But beyond that, everything was stock right out of the box. Everything worked absolutely great. So this board pretty much saved the day. Now, as far as the system goes, we'll be bringing you another review of just this system by itself. So those people out there who are interested in buying one can see more in depth about what's going on with this system. But everything about this system runs absolutely great. It passed all of the tests in flying color, no hiccups, no lockups, nothing at all to complain about whatsoever. And at the end of this video, I, I have to say that I have to give AMD hats off actually for this because I think at the end of this video, when you guys see all the results, you'll be pretty surprised. Now, I know AMD fans are going, yeah, all right, kick that Intel booty. But honestly, this is the closest gap I've ever seen before. So with that said though, let's real quick, let's jump in and let's check out the test systems. Now also, we're running the latest drivers available at the time of this build. Now, sure, new drivers can come out every week, but I'm not going to keep testing forever and ever and ever because things have been delayed as well. And also, we use Windows and we use the anniversary update, so everything in the system is completely updated before we start running the test. All the hard drives are formatted. Everything on both systems is a complete, fresh install of Windows for the absolute best performance that you can get. So with that said, though, let's real quick let's check out the AMD system. 
So you guys can see, obviously, we're using the 2700X. We've got 16 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz memory. We've got a boot drive that's an SSD. This is pretty much the same on both systems. Got a nice two terabyte hard drive for the storage and putting all mainly most of the games on. So overall, this is a very, very nice system. Like I said, I'll be bringing you guys a full review showing you guys this system so you guys can check it out for yourself. Now, on the Intel side of things, this particular computer I built to be my music computer. And a lot of people made weird comments, but it's not silent, but I'll get into that another day. It wasn't meant to be silent. This is a digital music computer, so I wasn't worried about any of that other stuff with a little bit of noise. But you guys can see this computer is very nice. It has an 8700K inside of it. it. has, once again, 16 gigabytes of memory, a nice SSD for the boot drive, lots of room for, for spaces. I mean, I actually went kind of overboard as far as the hard drives in the system going, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the performance. But pretty much these two systems are as much equal as I could really get them unless I just tried to buy the exact same parts down the line. But, you know, we build different systems, different, you know, different systems have different parts inside of them. At the end of the day, though, once you're in performance, when, you know, and you're playing games and all that stuff, um, things like, you know, really how quick it boots and stuff like that would really be the only difference is depending on the quality of the drives itself. So with that said, though, those are the two systems. And now let's jump in, let's check out the benchmark song, and let's see how well these systems do against each other. And then let's give you guys a conclusion of what my honest opinions are about this brand new AMD CPU. So let's rock.
Now you guys can see from the gaming scores that these two systems scored almost identical. One or two frames here, which is really no big deal at all. So if I was going to recommend either one of these systems for gaming, I'd have to say they're both totally equal and neither one of them really scores better than the other. It's kind of definitely a trade-off here. Now there was one exception, however. Far Cry 5 literally kicked ass on the Intel CPU and that's pretty amazing stuff. Now the temperature of the CPU is a very important aspect when you're running your system. You guys can see that AMD actually wins in this particular scenario. At the max, their CPU was running at 65 Celsius, but on the Intel side of things, we were seeing a maximum temperature of 100 Celsius. Now, that's one really good thing and shows AMD winning as far as the power versus heat ratio goes. Okay, so at the end of the day, with all the testing, the temperatures, the gaming, and with that Far Cry 5 score, honestly, these CPUs are almost the identical price. And for the first time ever, ever really, I feel completely and honestly at ease telling you guys that the 2700X is a damn fine CPU. Paired with the right motherboard, there is plenty of power here. And remember, I did all of my testing and everything other than the XMP memory change right out of the box. I didn't overclock the memory. I didn't overclock the CPUs. We'll have another video where we actually overclock the systems and we'll bring them to you and show you which one actually overclocks better. But for out of the box performance, if I could build a system on the AMD side of things and make it cheaper than the Intel, I would definitely at this point go with the AMD 2700X. Very nice CPU. You guys can see its max temperature is running at 65 Celsius. On the Intel side of things, 100 Celsius. That's quite a bit of temperature range there. Now, we all know that CPUs can run pretty hot as long as they're being cooled correctly, but even that right there, is kind of makes me go, wow, you know, <laughs> I really didn't realize that the Intel CPU was running that much hotter than the AMD side of things. And both systems have very nice liquid coolers in them. It's not like one has a cheesy one and one has a really good one. They both have pretty equal coolers that, you know, these CPUs I think should be running a little bit closer, but with AMD being the clear winner there. And if you're a person who plays Far Cry 5, that's your game of choice. Well, you can see that this new AMD CPU honestly runs that game faster than the Intel side of things, as squirrely as that might be, it's just the facts. So at the end of the day, I have to say, I do give the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X as a CPU, I give it an editor's choice. I think for its price, performance ratio, and the way that it compares to Intel's top dog, the 8700K for the desktop area, I say that's a definite thumbs up and win for AMD. Now, if we could just see the same thing going on over on the video card side of things, that would be amazing. Amazing. Um, the more competition, the better AMD does, the better it is for all of us because it forces Intel to get off their laurels and do something about it. Now, we see the 2700X, and honestly, this isn't even really the next gen of AMD CPUs. When I first got it at first, I think I made a mistake on my videos, and I said, hey, you know, this is the next gen, but it's really not. It's just the latest in their line of CPUs. It's not like the next gen really in anything whatsoever. They have other CPUs that are coming out. Now, with that said, since the margin here is so close. I mean, the Intel did score better on certain things, you know what I mean? But for most people, I think a lot of people out there are gonna buy their computer either for streaming or for gaming. And at this point, like I said, if you can save money, I would definitely go with the AMD side of things. For one thing, the CPU running a lot cooler than the Intel, to me, is a really good thing because the cooler your CPU runs, the longer life it's going to have. So you guys saw it, folks, 2700X, damn fine CPU. When AMD releases their new line of CPUs, honestly, I think that they'll finally cross the gap and they'll be able to beat Intel at the same price point. Now, at that time, Intel is either going to be left scrambling, literally, or they better, better, seriously, have something up their sleeve that's going to come out into the market. Because the last few releases from Intel have been kind of just like, eh. And with AMDs, just with these latest releases, I have to say, they've crossed the gap. They've done a damn fine job. 
I salute you AMD for that. I'm Elric, you guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Like I said in the very beginning of the video, if you guys wanna get 10% off an Amazon gift card, you guys can use that Bitmo app and you can get it for 10% off using TOT10 and that'll help support the site. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would like and share this video with other people so that they can see the video as well. That would mean a lot to me. And if you're not subscribed and you'd like to be subscribed to the channel, hey, please do so. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless everybody. We'll see you back here later.